Hey everybody, I know I'm very late to the party on this one, but I did finally have a chance to check out Cruella. This was directed by Craig Gillespie and stars Emma's Stone and Thompson. This is of course a reimagining of the classic villain from 101 Dalmatians as a more sympathetic character because why not? It worked for Maleficent, at least in terms of box office receipts. I wasn't really sure what to expect from this one, but what I ended up with was a very silly movie. The beginning of this movie was pretty stupid, the coda was just confusing, and everything in between was honestly fine. Not great, but fine. It starts out with a young girl named Estrella, who is not necessarily a bad child, but a bit of a troublemaker, and she was apparently born with her hair color split right down the middle. This is actually what we're going with. Her hair was born half white and half black. That's that's what we're doing. Okay, fine, sure. Now I know it's possible for a child to be born with a patch of gray hair. There's even a name for that condition, which I cannot remember at the moment, but that's okay because I am going to use my magical powers to look into the future where I am Googling the name of that condition and it is this. I can see the future. But yeah, I know it's a real condition. It's just the dead even split down the middle. Like, I know that's what the original character looked like, but the original character was a cartoon. But anyway, at some point during the flashback to Estrella's childhood, it happens. And if you've seen the videos floating around on the internet, you know what I'm referring to. People were making jokes before this movie even came out that we were going to discover, oh, Cruella's family was murdered by savage Dalmatians, and that's why she hates them. And then it turns out that's actually what happens to her mother. She gets killed by friggin' Dalmatians. Oh my god. What? And what makes it even more bizarre is... This doesn't even lead to her developing a lifelong hatred of Dalmatians. That doesn't happen in the movie at all. So, just... What was the point? But anyway, she eventually meets Jasper and Horace, played by Joel Fry and Paul Walter Hauser, and they scrape by for a while as small-time crooks. And then she meets Ziggy Stardust, played by John McRae. I think the character's name is actually Artie, but he runs a vintage clothing shop, and he's a bit out there. In more ways than one. And through a wacky turn of events, Estrella ends up working as a fashion designer for Baroness Von Hellman, played by Emma Thompson. The same woman who killed her mother. And over time, she plans revenge via her alter ego and rival fashion designer, Cruella. And then it gets weird. So as silly as this movie is, and as stupid as the bit with the Dalmatians killing her mother was, there is actually a lot of good stuff happening here. The two Emmas are fantastic. The Baroness and Cruella are locked in a never-ending battle throughout the movie to see who can chew the most scenery. Who wins? The audience, really. I kinda dug the Ziggy Stardust character as well. I mean, McRae knew exactly what that character was supposed to be, and he nailed it. The movie is put together very well. I thought Gillespie did a pretty good job recreating 1970s London. Uh, I was a little thrown off by the fact that this movie takes place in the 70s, considering the original movie came out in, I think, 1961. So this is somehow a prequel, but it takes place after the original... Uh, I was a bit thrown off by that at first, but you know what? The sets look great, the costumes, the soundtrack. It's all put together very well. There were some parts of the story that did not work really well for me. Uh, I already mentioned the mother getting killed by the Dalmatians. I still can't believe they did that. Later on in the movie, there's a point where Jasper and Horace start to become kind of disillusioned with their longtime friend as the Cruella persona starts to take over and Estrella just kind of fades off into the background. But then by the end of the movie, they're pretty much okay with Cruella for some reason. And not a whole lot has changed about the Cruella persona by the end of the movie. Basically, all she had to do was tone it down just like one notch, and that was good enough for them. I had a hard time buying that. And even though I dug the soundtrack, I was a little disappointed that all we got of the classic Cruella de Vil song was a little snippet of it in the mid credit scene. And speaking of the mid credit scene, and if I'm going to talk about this, I think I need to throw up the spoiler tag, so if you don't want it spoiled, mute until this goes away. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. 
So at the end of the movie, we learn one of Baroness von Hellman's Dalmatians, which are now Cruella's Dalmatians, is pregnant. And then we see Cruella gifting Pongo and Perdita as puppies to Roger and Anita. Does that mean Pongo and Perdita are siblings? Because if they are siblings and the story takes a similar trajectory to the original... Ooh. That... That, that's gonna get awkward. Overall, this movie is very dumb, and there's quite a bit of stuff in there that does not make sense, and I'm not really sure that this movie ever actually justified its existence, because we really did not need to turn Cruella de Vil into a sympathetic anti-hero. All that said, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have fun. There's enough entertaining stuff going on, mostly from the two Emmas, that I was able to enjoy it. I don't know that this is worth paying the money to see it in a theater, definitely not worth the Disney Plus premium charge, but when it hits proper VOD, I think it's worth a rental. And that's all I have to say about Cruella. Till next time, take care.